the five directions and the eight gates are kind of work together. So um, it's worth thinking of them together. The five directions is basically forward and back, glance to the right, glance to the left, so basically right and left, and then central equilibrium, or taking the center. Um, it seems obvious, um, but there is, uh, there is a subtlety to the final concept of central equilibrium. Um, it's not just the middle point, it's the vertical, which means that there's an additional option of moving up and down within that vertical. It is also a place, right? So it is the line that connects the crown of the head, goes through the body and connects to the feet. So a central, central equilibrium is the awareness of the vertical through the movement as you move right to left, back and forth. What, where is your vertical? So it's not just a direction, it's also a potential state within yourself. Do you have your vertical as you move through space? Are you maintaining your vertical? And it's not a matter of being rigid, about always being upright, but it's about the awareness of the upright, the awareness of the vertical, so that if you go away from the ver vertical for a bit, you're coming back to the vertical, right? so that you're not stuck leaning forward, leaning back. You're all, if you do lean forward, you're going to come back to it because you know that you're away from the vertical. It's important because in terms of posture, you want to have the head up in terms of alignment for chi flow, etc., but also for balance. So the fact, the vertical itself is an indic indication of your balance. So you always want to have that, that idea. Moving through space is also moving the vertical through space. Right? So it's the vertical, which is the, really the stack of the head over the spine, over the hips, over the feet. That entire system is moving in these different directions. That's what the five directions really are. Those five directions then are used with the eight gates. And the eight gates is referenced through the Bhagwan which is this Taoist map of how the energies intermix. That's where the, the word gates come from, it's from the Bagua. It's really the eight moves, but it's, to be more precise, it's the eight qu different qualities of energy that we can generate. Those are the eights that we are going to use when doing any kind of Tai Chi. And each of them is a balance of yin and yang. So some of them are defensive, the more yin, and some of them are more offensive, the more yang. And those eight gates are then expressed in one of the five directions. And we'll be going uh, in a different video. I'll go over the in details what the eight gates are. But the important thing is that each gate is simply a quality of energy. It then needs to be given a direction. That's where the five directions come in. Right? So a push, for example, which is one of the, the gates, or one of the energies, is meaningless. A push has to be pushing towards something. So whether it's a push forward, backwards, up, down, to the right, to the left, doesn't matter. It has to be qualified by a direction. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. It's just a meaningless energy. It needs to have that, that direction. So the eight gates is an expression of the, ener the qualities of energy, eight different potential energies. The directions are the direction in which you are uh, not just moving, but the direction in which you're projecting these eight energies. So that's why the two of them go together. And we'll see that it's that co combination that creates all of the different moves in Tai Chi, which is also what gives us the 13 postures. Eight, and five, eight plus five is 13, and that's why we have 13 postures.